Hey YouTube, back with another video from Kiev, Ukraine, and I realize it's been a little while since I posted a video, but uh, the weather hasn't really cooperated uh, since we came out of winter. Uh, we're in the middle of another lockdown and quarantine, uh, but today the weather's kind of nice, so I thought I would get out and walk around a little bit. So the metros are closed, the buses are closed, the trams are closed, everything's closed, uh, restaurants are open for takeout only, museums are closed, everything's closed. So. Um, I thought maybe I'd just walk around my neighborhood and show you guys where I spend most of my day. I live in the neighborhood of Podil, which is the oldest district in Kiev. As you can see behind me, it's the uh, big Ferris wheel, which I'll show you here just a little bit from another angle. Um, like I said, I just thought I'd walk around, show you a little bit about the, the neighborhood, and uh, let's we'll see what we can get into. So right in the middle of Podil, we have the famous uh, Kontraktova Plosha, Kontraktova Square. Uh, it's home to quite a few things here. Some of you may recognize some of the buildings from the Christmas market video I filmed uh, in December. So I will show you a few of the buildings here. For reference here is the Ferris wheel. It's one of the big banks behind it. This building right here is a Radisson Blue, so if you're looking for a place to stay, this isn't a bad place to stay. It's pretty close to everything, close to Maidan, close to the metro stations, uh, quite a few restaurants and things like that around here. Um, the street right here, if you take it to the left, it takes back to the Friendship Arch. You can see St. Andrew's Cathedral right there. That uh, Maybe you've seen my, my video uh, that I did on that, but judging by my subscriber count, you probably haven't. Uh, the bottom of the descent is right here where it comes out. So this building here, from what I told, used to have quite a few different shops and open air markets and things like this. Uh, from what I heard, an investor bought it and was going to remodel it and I guess this kind of still made it since then. Now it just kind of sits here as an eyesore, which it's unfortunate because it's actually a pretty, pretty cool looking building the way it's designed. All right, we'll see what else we can find up here. Uh, we'll see what's over here. I remember there is a mural back in here. Ah, there it is. It's this mural on the side of the building I always see. Kiev really does have some great murals and street art. You know, I never see this open, so I never see anybody back here. So I'm not 100% sure what this is. Okay, I just found out what that is. I thought it was a university, but I wasn't sure. So uh, now I see it is. It's actually uh, it's the University of Kiev Motila, which, funny enough, I'm thinking about transferring over to this university for the Ukrainian program because I am not too happy with my current program at my university that I'm spending quite a bit of money on. Jump back out here. Here is one of the city theaters in front of me, this kind of round building. And there's something else right next to it I want to show you if I, I can get over there. So we're right around the corner from where we just were. Another one of these fabulous murals. Right above this little bar here called the Du Bar. It's a nice little craft beer bar. Same owners own another one across the other side of the square called the Drunken Monkey. And what I really wanted to show you around the corner here was I've never noticed this painting before. It's like a like a Bansky, doesn't it? <laughs> and unfortunately, it's closed, but I knew that before I came here. So this is the National Chernobyl Museum actually came here in 2016, about two years before I actually visited uh, Chernobyl. One of the Chernobyl memorials. Some of the vehicles they used during the Chernobyl disaster. Medical vehicles, cleaning vehicles, military vehicles. Now probably around June, I think maybe, I am going to do another trip to Chernobyl. And I'm thinking about this time uh, doing a private tour, instead of a group tour. Scheduling a private tour because they will actually take you to uh, one of the, the Babushka's houses, the little grandmothers that moved back. 
take you in there, have dinner, interview them, get to talk to them, and then I will also get a permit for my for my drone. All right. Okay, here we are on the other side of the square. For reference point, there's the uh, Ferris wheel over there. So as you can see, the trams pull up right here, which is nice because they pick me up right in front of my apartment building. Three or four stops later, I'm right here for 30 cents. You walk into this part of the square. Great little bakery there. And then here's the metro. So you can take the tram right here, jump on the metro, get anywhere in the city. Good little restaurant here and beer bar. Pibla Duma. Here's the Porter Pub, which they're all over the city. They're not the greatest place as far as quality of beer, food, but they're uh, quick, they're convenient, they're cheap. It's one of the Roshan shandy stores from the former president, Borshenko. Uh, that's a little place here. The Awning, Lviv Croissants. And then right next to it is a really good little seafood place called Mushla. Um, they have a surf and turf burger, which is a like a slider burger, and it has a big prawn on it. Uh, a little slider cheeseburger prawn wrapped in foil and it kind of steams itself. It's pretty damn good. Uh, let's walk around, back around the side. Yeah, this is right around the corner from the Chernobyl Museum. Quite a bit on this little side street here. It's a really excellent little cocktail bar here. Called Takis. <laughs> so happy YouTube. <laughs> It's a really good little bar, really good, uh, really good drinks. They uh, have a twist on a. Um, sorry, I have to get out of the way here. They have a twist on a traditional uh, whiskey sour. It's called a Mama Said. Uh, it's after the Metallica song, and they do a whiskey sour, of course, of bourbon, and then a little bit of a cookie flavoring in it too for the, the kid, and then the bourbon for the mom. Uh, rec recommend it. Martin is really great. Ask for Max or Maxi. Get a chance to go in there. So as you can see, the, the doors are open on some of these places because it's carry-out only. So um, a lot of the bars here, <laughs> cocktail bars, you can get cocktails to go, which uh, it's kind of nice. But over the during the winter, you know, didn't really want to sit outside. Although there were some troopers, they get some drinks, sit outside the bars, have drinks. Now uh, today, the weather's a little better. It's about 50 or 55 degrees here today, maybe. So. Uh, now things will start picking up for the summer and even during quarantine at least some of the restaurants and the bars will be open for carry out so you can return to some semblance of normal uh, although there's really they haven't started rolling out the vaccines yet and even uh, if you have a vaccine like yours truly it doesn't matter there's no special provisions so everything's still closed to you like even though i'm vaccinated i still can't get on the metros and the buses that are running just for uh, essential personnel and workers so their essential personnel card's good but my vaccine card isn't. So this is a new place here I haven't seen before. It's called Crabzilla. <laughs> okay. Hey, here's a couple pretty cool, cool places here. So uh, the blue place here is uh, um, East India Trading Company or East India Company. It's a restaurant and cocktail bar also. Really good food, really good cocktails. Uh, the owner, one of the owners, is actually American. So uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not uh, promoting his place because he's American. I've only met him once or twice. I'm promoting his place because it's a really cool restaurant, really good food, really good cocktails, really cool uh, decor and atmosphere inside as well. So this is definitely one of the places I, I recommend. Uh, right next to it is Dos Amigos Mexican Cafe. Um, all the Mexican food you get here, it's not, you know, it's not true food like a Mexican or even Tex-Mex, but uh, this is one of the better Mexican uh, cafes I've been to here. Their uh, chili con carne is actually pretty decent, so uh, also worth a stop if you're in the area and you're craving some Mexican food. I'd hate to see what goes on in there. I always thought this little place here looked pretty cool, so I went to pop in there for lunch one day. Come to find out it's vegan, and uh, I like meat, so I didn't try it. <laughs> so I was gone all last summer. When I got back, a lot of new uh, restaurants and things have opened. So this opened while I was gone. I 
have not tried it. Um, I don't need sugar. Usually there's a lot of people in there, especially on the weekends. It looks good. If I decide to bite the bullet, oh, wait till the dog's pass, I'll walk over here and look at the menu. Snickers, huh? That is Snickers pancakes. Oh wow. Well, if I ever bite the bullet uh, and decide to eat some sugar, maybe I'll come in here and definitely give it a, give it a try. And right around the corner from the pancake place, a little street where I spend some of my time. Here's that goose bar, a little gastro pub. Across the street is uh, Grail's Bar, which is not open yet. It's a pretty cool little laid back place. Uh, right up here at the skeleton in the window, my buddy Tommy lives. I just called him, he's not. He didn't answer the phone. He actually runs like a little vintage clothing store out of his apartment. I was gonna give him some free advertisement, show you guys what it was like in there and what he had. But uh, I'll take a rain check on that. One of my other places I hang out here is Would You Like Bar. This is uh, definitely one of my uh, favorite cocktail bars in the city. Unfortunately, it's not open right now either. Uh, it's only 20 after five, so I'm sure they'll probably be open a little bit. Um, what do you like bars? Great little craft cocktail bar. Have an upstairs and a downstairs. Downstairs, they remodeled during the summer. Kind of looks like an old uh, speakeasy type bar down there now. Uh, pretty nice little place. And then we're right across the street from there. I'm gonna step out in front of the car. That's okay. So, this green building right here, funny enough, is the Metropolitan Police Station. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then right under the Metropolitan Police Station is a uh, little bar here called Hlam, H L A M. Fun little place, cool music. Uh, that's where I spend quite a bit of time. A really cool group of people hang out in there. Uh, really laid back. It is the after hours bar. It's open really late, which I think is funny because it's open after hours, right? Below the Metropolitan Police Station, so don't ask me how that works. It's really frustrating. I wanted to show you all these places and everything's closed. However, I just saw them raise the, uh, the shutters on Would You Like Bar, so maybe it's going to open here in about 30 minutes. Maybe I'll wander around a little bit, try to find something to eat, and then uh, pop in one of these places, grab a drink, maybe let you meet some of the bartenders and see what it's like inside. Had to run across the street real quick. Um, saw a mural I haven't seen before. So, walk over here. And see if we can get this. There's a website online that talks about all the murals in Kiev, so I'm gonna to have to see what this one is. Usually, uh, the bear represents Russia, so I'm, I'm curious to the significance of, of this one here. Definitely have to look this one up. So I walked back here behind the mural, opened up into a courtyard with some of these buildings. You know, one thing I really haven't done since I've been here is uh, do video and talk about the old uh, Soviet-style housing here. Um, a lot of it, <clears throat> See, it kind of kind of looks the same from the outside so in soviet times buildings had to be uh five stories or less anything above five stories they had to put a lift in so you do see all these uh like i said soviet era building era buildings that don't have lifts in them and they look pretty rough from the outside so during soviet times uh you know in communist uh, under communist regime the buildings were owned by the state and so the people lived in them um, after the soviet union fell people uh, bought these apartments inside so they own the apartments, but nobody really specifically owns the building. So while the outside of these apartments look pretty bad, you can see like, uh, um, like this balcony right here. See, it's a newer style. So a lot of these apartments have actually been redone on the inside. I looked at a couple when I moved here and the buildings look like, you know, hammered ass on the outside, but some of the apartments on the inside had saunas built in and they were brand new. So they're gorgeous, but the stairwells and the outside of the buildings look like uh, they're gonna fall apart. So uh, that was funny. Some of the uh, little babushkas are, are down here having an evening meeting. Privet babushka. So, um, so like I said, these, these Soviet-style buildings, a lot of them are pretty cheap too. Um, you may be able to find rent in some of them. Uh, Two-bedroom apartment maybe for the equivalent of two hundred dollars a month. So 
like they tore something out here doing the little construction back here, making it new. Okay, back out on the main street. So I've been walking down here for quite a while. Here's a pretty cool little store. It's a uh, it's an Italian grocery store. Kind of cool seeing the, the glass everywhere. A couple of benches covered with glass. All kinds of little uh, products from Italy. Oh, I see some sriracha. It's not Italian, but I like it. Never know what you'll find walking the streets of Kiev. So here's one of the things that kind of drives me crazy about living here. This store. So this is a flower shop. We buy flowers. It's called Camellia. This is uh, this is Cyrillic, but it's in print. K A M E L E. Yeah, Camellia. However, if you look over here, this is actually written in cursive. Uh, um, this is written in cursive. It's K V I T E, Kviti, which is flowers. This is big. <laughs> this is in English. And then they're back to cursive. So uh, I didn't get that at first. I didn't even realize there was a difference between print and cursive Cyrillic. It's a little challenge. And here's Camellia entrance. symbol. <laughs> okay, so I was almost all the way down by the river. Um, then I decided it's a little too far to go today. It's starting to get dark. Technically, that down there is not really part of Padil. Um, but, sorry, looking for traffic. Um, while I was walking down there, my buddy Tommy called. He's back home now. So we're going to go back and show you guys his uh, little vintage clothing store. He runs out of his shop. Um, hopefully a couple of the bars right there are open. Well, open for carry out only, but at least they'll, they'll be open so you can see them. And uh, let's see, I got something to eat. Stopped at one of the Lviv croissant places that I, I showed you earlier. Um, definitely worth checking it out. I got the Lviv ski croissant, easy to remember. Ham, cucumbers, tomato, egg, lettuce. Pretty good. Okay, we'll head to Tommy's. So whenever we're walking down the side streets, I always see these kind of little arch things. They lead back into courtyards. I walk back through there and uh, all, all kinds of stores, little bars and pubs, and you never know what you're gonna find back there. This one looks like a school. So let's go, let's go check it out. A Ukrainian school. This would be like a, an elementary school. Usually they're numbered. Yeah, definitely a little elementary school. I don't see a number on it anywhere though. There's a plaque up by the doorway. Uh oh, school's closed. Oh shoot. So in case you've ever wondered what a little <laughs> elementary school looks like. A little shop back here as well. Like I said, you never know what you're gonna find when you walk back in these places. Yep, little uh, boutique clothing store back here. You're in the stop.
Oh, nothing else back here. Okay. On the tummies. See if there's anything exciting down this one. So many of these look like the beginning or a scene out of a horror movie. Oh, that's funny. I know where this one is. It's kind of a shortcut through the block then. This actually comes out right behind Woody Like Bar. Oh boy. The turquoise here. Keep me in. A really cool photo from here. This is all green during the summer. And the sun was setting, kind of cast a pink light through here. So if you guys want to find this place, there's Grail's Bar, there's a sign right next to it here. Push the number one. If that doesn't work, try them on WhatsApp. Okay, so I finally made it my, to my buddy Tommy's shop, which goes by the name uh, Joybox. Um, so I will let him do an introduction, and we'll take a look around some of the merchandise. And uh, I will put uh, links in my description to his uh, Instagram and his contact information in case you want to get a hold of him about some of the things you may see here. Okay, it's my buddy Tommy. He's from California. That explains the haircut. Um, oh. So you are in his shop right now, which is Joybox. Specializes in uh, vintage clothing and curiosities. And uh, anything, you, anything you want to say, Tommy? Yeah, um, I've been here for just a few months, and uh, the pandemic has kept things slow. But um, I'm going to try to press on and uh, keep it open. And right now, I'm going to take this uh, bottle of uh, vodka and. Uh, just try to keep everything clean with it, like, like so. Let's see. It's the most Soviet thing I've ever seen, Tommy. Right there. Yeah, yeah, I kind of uh, I read online, and you know, everything's true online. I read online that it's really good for the, keep the clothes nice and clean. And so, so far it seems to have worked. So there you go. I mean, Lukashenko, the Belarusian president, said if you drink vodka and use a sauna, you won't get COVID. So there you Maybe go. I should be uh, using the sauna more often. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the stuff you got here. Uh, well, I've got uh, some of these dresses are very uh, cool and some of them aren't. <laughs> I've got a couple. I mean, you, did you get a shot of, of Homegirl over here? A loaded magazine cover? This looks like my mom's closet <laughs> from high school exploded. Not that mom. If you're watching the video, I don't mean this picture. I just mean these clothes look like your, your wardrobe from high school yeah, exploded. Uh, on this side of the fence, I've got. Um, you know, I have to support Ukraine because I'm here, and uh, this guitar over here is not for sale. Um, but this is for sale, and it's pretty special. Let's just take a quick look. That's pretty cool. Kiss Cruise. <laughs> I mean, they actually did a cruise. Yeah, I've been to make it. Nice. Yeah. Oh, so pretty recent, that. too. 2015. Yeah, yeah. That one's uh, funny. And then also, the, this is going to be a big seller, I think, if anybody ever makes it in here. It's a Justin Bieber. Oh man, that right <laughs> concert shirt. Probably right. more in demand than your Kiss shirt, right? Probably. 
I don't know. I don't know, actually know what Ukrainians like, so Definitely that's kind of a problem. Right. But, uh, yeah, there's some cool stuff to be had. I actually like this. Uh, oh, so the super, the super, super fly. fly. Yeah. Yeah, it turns out, uh, yeah, Ukrainian <laughs> colors. <laughs> kind of cool. I don't know. I got some cool okay, stuff. Diesel jacket. Um... Yeah. So we were talking, you have stuff for men and women, but not not kids. Not kids. I did pick up a couple of kids things, but only because uh, when I see something like this hilarious, for example, I had to get it. It's never, you know, still has a tick tag on it. If you take a close look, it's like they've mixed the sports. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's like... Uh, <laughs> Football World it's Cup, World just the uh, wrong kind. Football, San Francisco, yeah. Well, speaking of football, got your uh, scarves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know behind me, I saw Schland, Deutschland. Vintage purses, there you go. Yeah, some cool Sum stuff. Sumka for this the ladies. Yeah, right here, everybody likes this one. There you go. 60. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like the stuff that the cast from WKRP in Cincinnati wore back in the day. Yeah, which is great because I'm a fan. Um, Everybody's a fan of Lonnie Anderson. Yeah. Didn't they ban this in the States or something already? This is, a, this is from my home. Somebody I'm, find it offensive. <laughs> <laughs> right there, California, right there. So it's nice. pretty interesting. You got a. Uh, so you've got a um, you've got a Instagram page with a lot of this inventory on it, right? That's right, Joybox underscore shop, and it's spelled J O Y. Uh, sorry, B O K C. It's a little bit of a play. I like I like this. I like this. I like this. I will. Uh, I'll put that. Uh, I'll put that down in the description of the videos. Oh, yeah, cool. Nice. <laughs> this one I just picked up. Yeah, Amsterdam stoned me. Yeah, so there's a few American flag things here, which I think is important because I'm American. Is this a raincoat? Yep, pretty cool raincoat. I think I like that one. And this was this was a, a um, I don't want to say knockoff. A uh, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess knockoff is the word for Dolce & Gabbana. Yeah, that's pretty pretty cool knockoff though in terms of knockoffs quality. Yeah. It's like the Ukrainian uh, Elisavenka. All this stuff over here. Nice flask. And then, I mean, here you can finish your... I think this is a good, a good one to finish your video on. I don't even know what you have. You have stuff folded in yeah. G-Star. I actually found a yeah. G-Star shirt over here. G-Star and White House. I don't know. It's a nice, it's a nice sweater. Um, Good grief. I realize you had so much here. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. But I think this is a good finisher right here. Oh, there you go. So. <laughs> nice. There, there you go. Well, I've, I've only been here a year and a half, and this is the only uh, vintage clothing store I've seen in Kiev. So maybe you've got the... Uh, Got a niche, uh, yeah, little yeah, thing here going on. I've been here, coming here for about four years, and uh, I have, I feel like I have my, I feel like I know where to buy here. But I'm sure there's places I'm not, I'm not aware of, which I'd love to find out about. All right, bud, I appreciate you letting us uh, come in and hang out. So uh, anybody's in the Podil district, I'll have his contact information. Be sure to stop in if you get a chance. Look. And uh, all right, we'll move on from here. So I'm just now leaving Tommy's shop. Uh, as you can see, it's dark out now. Spent a little too much time in there talking. Um, so everything is still closed. A lot of the bars that I thought were gonna open didn't open tonight. So I decided before I even went over to Tommy's, I'm gonna make a Hodil part two video. So we'll just consider this part one. So now the weather's getting a little better. Um, Hopefully after the um, uh, 16th, I believe, is when the quarantine ends. Um, I've got to work next weekend, 17th, 18th. 
So sometime after that, hopefully quarantine ends, things are open back up, the weather will hold, and uh, maybe I can find some stuff open, do a proper video, show you a bunch of the things I wanted to show you I didn't get a chance to. Do a little, little further walking up here to see what, what's open. Okay, so I walk a little bit more. Nothing's open. The temperature's dropped. I'm still wearing shorts. So, uh, like I just said, I'm gonna go ahead and do a part two video later on. But for now, I think I'm gonna hail, call it a night. Hail a taxi. So thanks for watching. See you soon.